So the next coloring approach we can do is adding full spectrum color into our local areas, right? So our local color, like the yellow for the beak, the local color is the flat color. And then we split that local color into duotone, first with hard edges, lights and darks, and then with soft edges, <laughs> And it's got kind of a, a mix of both. I think I like it with just the soft edge, but just hard edge and just a few selected areas. Now, if I want to put something other than that local color in there, that would be called full spectrum. So one way to do that is to actually copy my local flat colors again, rename it full spectrum, Put it on top of my duotones. Where to go? Put it on top of my duotones. There we go. And now I'm going to go to my gradient fill. So what I'm going to do is actually use my magic wand, select the empty space around my colors, select the inverse. So now every color that's in full spectrum, that's in my flat color is selected. So what would this look like? If I turned off everything else, looks like this, like all those colors are selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the tool that's with the paint bucket tool. It's called the gradient tool. And I'm gonna paint over all of these a gradient. Now I can do it that way and that makes sense, and it can give me full control of what I paint. Let's pick a really crazy gradient. Let's do, let's see, iridescence, something like this, and then just paint. Ooh, and you can kind of see it in real time where they might go, and you can even cross them over, so I can pick a different gradient. And then do another line like this, at a different opacity. You can just do all kinds of things, right? The idea is that now that I've done that gradient fill, that can bleed with my other colors. Another way to do it is to just do it with a gradient overlay layer style, which is a little bit easier because then you can turn it on and off. But I want you to understand the, the principles of it. So I'm gonna turn all these things back on. I don't really need my references anymore. Don't need my flatting anymore but I can leave on the other stuff. And now on this full spectrum layer, which is just my flat color, I'm gonna replace that with a gradient overlay. And I can create my own gradient or I can use some of the built-in ones. Let's try, uh, let's try greens. Yeah, disgusting. But it's a school color, so. And then let's customize it. So let's throw in little pink let's throw in a little dark blue let's throw in a little fluorescent green see i'm making kind of this band let's throw in a bright blue okay and now i can play with the scale of it you can get all those colors in there I don't love that bright green. Let's change that to something a little bit more neutral, maybe in the oranges. This is gonna be kind of wild, but that's the point of full spectrum. Let me throw a bright red right in here. Okay, now I say, okay, play with the scale, play with the angle, kind of like that, play with the opacity. Now this is what's going to layer it with my flat color, right? But I'm going to put it at a full opacity 
and then I'm just going to take the opacity of the full layer down and let my duotone colors come through. And voila, just like that, I have full spectrum color. Do I like it? Not really. I like it in some parts. I like it on the tongue. But what I can also do is play with blending modes and let certain things come through. But actually, blending modes won't work unless I rasterize the layer style. And then I can play with blending modes. So it only affects it in some areas, like pin light. So now I have some pinks adding full spectrum in some areas, right? So what does it look like without it? Like that. And then I can play with the opacity and see how much do I want that full spectrum. Because I like it in some areas more than others. I can also just erase away from it with a soft, low opacity eraser. Again, all these skills we learned from compositing projects early in the semester. Yeah, actually, I kind of like that. So, does that look better than without it? I think so, but maybe it's a little too red. So then I can also use adjustments, and I can play with color balance and just shift it a little bit away from those magentas. Not all the way, because I want the to still be magenta. Just in the midtones. Play with the highlights. Push that more towards the brights. Push the shadows more towards the blue. Now we have some pretty dramatic lighting. Yeah, okay. And do I like it better with it than without it? I do. So that's full spectrum. Lock that. Does it look good on black? Yes. Does it look good on gray? Yes. Does it look good on white? Yeah. So that's full spectrum. That's subtle. All these are examples of full spectrum. But then, sometimes, we want even more. So what often goes with full spectrum is to not just leave a black line. Because full spectrum can sometimes compete with that black line. The example I use for this is Wonder Woman again. So we've seen Wonder Woman go from flat color to soft edge duotone. Now we start to have a little bit of full spectrum in Wonder Woman's skin. You'll see pinks and blues and you know other tones. But the biggest change is that the lasso is no longer inked with black line. The lasso has changed color. And that's what's called a color hold. So what makes the lasso glow here? It's that the black line art of the lasso was changed to you know, a bright orange. So let's play with that. All I have to do to play with color holds is make sure everything else is locked. Very good. And make a duplicate of your black line art, of your black bread, and then simply add a layer style to it. I can color overlay it and say maybe I want a dark blue instead of black lines. That's a very simple color hold, right? And do I like it with it or without it, right? Or maybe I want to make it a little bit more complicated as a color hold and I want to fill it with a gradient. And then I can play with the opacity of the blue and have that same gradient I used for my full spectrum affect the line art. So that's a little nutty, right? But what if I then play with rasterizing that, that layer style, and then play with the blending mode, like hard light, and you'll see it's very subtle, but it helps take the edge off where the highlights are of my line art and maybe make it look just a little bit more believable. I can also go to adjustments and play with levels and adjust my, my lines differently, right? 
until I like what the color hold is doing. Now that's a very subtle color hold. A more impactful one would be a glow. <clears throat> a glow not to the offset, but a glow to your line art. And I can do, instead of an outer glow like the lasso, I can do an inner glow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I can set it on normal, and I can say, okay, well, let's add kind of a dark green or a lighter green, because it is a glow, to this line art. And let's size it up. All right? Let's give the, that little hint. That tone to everything. Let's change the color. Let's try to make that... Oh, no, that green kind of works. Maybe about there. Let's make it a little noisier. No, let's keep it clean. And then... Can you see what that's doing? That's just giving it this tinge of green. I'm going to take that opacity down a little. So it just reinforces the school colors in a very subtle way on the lines. Now the last thing, so I'm going to call this color holds because the printer has to hold the black for those special effects to come through in professional printing. We see the color holds on the lasso. Here we see some color holds where the black line gets replaced. Here we see a color hold gradient where the black line's been replaced. Here it's been inverted. Right, That's a color hold of green around the lemon. Now special effects would be things like these highlights, which can also be considered color holds because they go up and over the top, like that highlight on the lemon. So if I want a little highlight, let's make a new layer. And this will be what I call special effects, FX, SFX. These are all little olives and toothpicks on top of the black bread. And all I'm going to do is use my brush, and I'm just going to paint with a light color. I don't like to use white. I always like to use kind of off-whites. <clears throat> and I'm going to paint pretty sharp <clears throat> with a pressure-sensitive brush some highlights. So where is it catching light? Maybe right here? Where else? Maybe right on the tip of the beak right here. Little X's, little stars. Maybe right on the edge of the handle right here. You see how it's going over the black line art? Maybe on the little sprocket here. And I don't want to overdo it too much. Maybe right here. And then maybe right at the top Right there. Okay, now, these are special effects. Do they look great? No. But what can I do? I can blur them. With blur, Gaussian blur, turn them into these little highlights, right? I can move them individually. Push them around. I can duplicate them, copy, paste them, and move them and have others So, uh, maybe I need a highlight in the eye as well. Copy, paste another one. Move it into the eye. I can rotate it. You can just do so, so much. It's so like a little reflection from the beak. Reflected light going onto the underside of the eye. And if I have that, maybe I want to have a little bit of that in this eye as well. Give it a little bit of life, but that one I'm going to take the opacity down on and I'm going to stretch it out a little bit more. There's just no end to what you can do with building a great digital coloring sandwich. Okay, now I'm going to bring most of those together, most of those special effects together into one. These are highlights for the eyes. And now I'm going to add outer glows to them, right? And these glows I'm going to make softer. 